And they're away in the men's open 5K. We've got McSween, Yoa, Whiteman, Nelson, Ruddy, Hargraves, Morgan, Smithers, Deneen, Brown, Hardy, Harris, Burton Whistle, Aloisi, Davies, Patterson, Bailey, Berry, and Mashford. It's a split start in the men's 5K with 19 competitors. And then they come down to the finish line for the first time. Mitchell Brown snuggled in the middle of the leading pack with Yoa. They'll have 12 laps to go. Yoa out in front. Berth Whistle second. On the inside is Whiteman. Tucked in behind him is Mitchell Brown. They'll start to settle out into a routine in the first lap. But Dua Yoa's out in front. He's setting the pace at the moment. And as this, the field starts to spread out over 45, 50 metres, there's certainly some talented athletes in this bunch, all vying for a possible A or B qualifier for the Commonwealth Games. The men's A qualifier for the 5K is 13 minutes and 20 seconds, and the men's B qualifier is 13 minutes and 35 seconds. The race record, or correction, the Victorian state record for this event is held by Craig Mottram in a time of 12 minutes 55.76, which he set on the 30th of July 2004 in London. We'll do our best during today's event to keep you up to date with how the boys are going, not only with the qualifier, but also with the Victorian record. So as the field comes through with 11 laps to go, it started to bunch up as you would expect with Dua Ewer from Eureka, followed by Bert Whistle, Brown on the outside of him, Hardy's in that pack as well. So there's about 30 to 35 metres and the field is spread over that distance with Dua Yoa setting the pace. Mitch Brown moving out from the inside, giving himself some room in this event. Bert Whistle's in third place and it looks like Dua Yoa's having a bit of a crack early on in the race which could suggest one or two things. He's actually a superman or he could potentially be pacing. I'm not sure what the, the scenario is there, but he's certainly moving out away and leading this pack at a reasonably fast pace. We might have to get some expert commentary from Steve Kelly to see how they're cracking with the, the pace in relation to this. But Ewers out in front, Brown's in second. What's the scoop? Do we think Ewers, Ewers pacing in this event, Steve? Or? Uh, it looks like he's having a pretty solid crack at the moment, but unfortunately it's Mitch in second and Mitch doesn't let anything go. He's really got a strong second half, so look for him to make up that gap in the next couple of laps. Awesome. So Ewa goes out in front. Mitch looks really comfortable in second place. And you've got Jacob, Bert Whistle in third. They seem to rein in. You are out in front and Mitch is moving up on the inside. He's not letting him get more than two or three metres away. And this is an interesting race. It's kind of like the push me, pull me doll. You go out fast, you come back. But Mitch has said, that's it. Thanks, you. You've given me the pace for the first 600. I'm taking it on myself. So Mitch Brown usually likes to lead. He did in cross country this season, XCR. He's been training quite hard. His aim, from my understanding, is he wants to try and qualify for the Commonwealth Games. He has entered for Zatapec later in, uh, in mid-December. And you'll see how he goes over that 10k. But tonight it's all about the five. It's kind of, it's a sprint distance for a, a long distance runner. So Mitch Brown leads the field in. They'll have nine laps to go when they cross the finish line. Still tucked in in second is Yoa. Jacob Burt Whistle is in third place. But I tell you who I like the look of, and this is not because I'm biased. Brandon Hargraves is looking really comfortable at the moment. Craig Ruddy is also up there. These guys have got a nice sit. They're nicely, nicely positioned in fourth and fifth place, making sure that the boys in front do all the hard work. And you would have seen from Courtney Powell in the women's open race where she led for a majority of the race. She did all the hard work and looks like Mitch has taken a leaf out of her book. He still looks very comfortable. He's still got Yoa right on his hammer. Jacob Bird, Bird Whistle. And look, the pack is actually starting to bunch up. I tell you, it's Hard to commentate this in the sense that it keeps on moving out and in and out and in like a, I suppose, an Italian musical instrument. I'll get the name of it in a minute, but I tell you, Mitch Brown is still out in front looking really comfortable. The time, we'll get the time in a comparison for you when they cross the line. They'll have eight laps to go and we're still in the business part of the race. You know, 
What's great to see about this event is all the boys look really fresh as the girls did in the women's open. Mitch Brown crosses the line. He'll have eight laps to go. We'll roughly get a time. It was about 5.09, 5.10. Brown, Yoa, Burt Whistle, Hargraves. They're the top four. And I tell you, the pack, five, six, seven, eight, they're all bunched up and there seems to be a bit of a lead, or mid-pack mid change at the moment. But we've still got Mitchell Brown out in front. Looks like he's starting to pick up his tempo. He's looking really comfortable. But you can tell by the croft of his hair that it's a gusty breeze around Lakeside. And the wind is blowing around five to 10 k's at the moment in various directions. So Mitch Brown comes into the home straight. At any point of the race, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to get behind these boys like you did the girls. We're talking about a 5K here. It's a hard, tough race, and in these conditions, anything can happen. But Mitch Brown looking really comfortable. Yoa in second, in third, Hargraves, by the look of it. And on the inside, my apologies, we have Burt Whistler sitting on the inside of Hargraves. That's the top four. And there's not much in this entire field. 35 metres separates first to 18. So Mitch Brown leads the field, which is bunched up to be about 30 metres from 1st to 18th. Mitch Brown comes down. We're around at the seven minute mark with six laps to go. 7.20, 7.21. Things are looking really relaxed for the boys. And Yoa, right on his hammer. And Steve Deneen has moved up right next to Bert Whistle and also Hargraves. There's been a bit of a change. Steve, Steve Deneen, sitting in third place, and Yoa is out in front with Mitch Brown second, Deneen third. About 7.12 the boys went through. Setting it up nicely so we'll get a better indication. When, you, when Yoa comes around, it'll be 2K down, 3K to go, so we'll be able to give you a comparison. But yet again, the lead changes. It's like that push me, pull me that I talked about before. Yo has actually stepped up the pace. He looks like he's running a 1500. He's out in front by about 25 metres. Mitch Brown is in second. Steve Deneen tucked in on the inside. And this is turning into be a, ma a mammoth race. They're after a 13.35 for a big qualifier. And Dewey Yoa heads across the line, five laps to go. Mitch Brown and Matthew Bailey's appeared from nowhere, from Halebury to come up into third. He's joined Brandon Hargraves and, his, and Jacob Birthwistle in that pack. In the midst of them is Stephen Deneen as well, who's sitting comfortably in fourth position. He looks like he's got a great sit in fourth. Hargraves and Birthwistle fifth and sixth by the look of it. But Dewey Yoa's gone out and he's gone out hard. He's put 70 metres in front of Mitch Brown, who's in second place. We're still only not even halfway. In fact, we're getting very close to halfway. And Dewey Yoa's said, that's it. I'm going to have a crack at this. 13.35's the B qualifier. 13.20. Dewey Yoa's from Eureka. And if my memory serves me correctly, he's... Um, Coached by Mr. Griffin up in Eureka. I could be wrong, I'll get that qualified. He is, I'm getting the nod. So Dewey Yoa comes up and he have four laps to go. He's looking pretty cool. Actually, he's looking really comfortable. This is a great race. Mitch Brown, about 25 metres behind him, is in second. In third, third place is Matthew Bailey, Steve Deneen. And Dewar's just continuing to put the distance. It's daylight second at the moment. 
but there's still four laps to go. Anything can happen. And I said that last time, and look what the Open women did. What a sensational race that was. But the focus is now is on Dua Yoa, who's in front. He's got 70 metres till second. Mitch Brown is in second. We've got Matthew Bailey in third. Steve Deneen in that pack. Hargraves as well in the orange. But when Yoa comes around, he'll have three laps to go. That means it turns into a sprint, we hope. And he's still looking really comfortable. He's actually got great tempo, great style. He looks really relaxed, great head position. Three laps to go, and we're talking around 10.50. Mitch Brown is in second, Bailey is in third, Deneen on the inside, Hargraves in WA, followed by Aloisi, then you've got Bert Whistle, then you have Whiteman. But at the moment, with 1,200 to go, it's still Dua Yoa. Mitch Brown is sitting in second, and Matthew Bailey third, followed by Steve Deneen and our friend Brandon Hargraves from WA. They're the lead pack, but it's all, what can I say? It's all Dua Yoa. He's 50 metres in front. He's still, do, he's still powering, he doesn't seem to be tiring and he'll come around with a couple of laps to go. Mitch Brown is starting to move forward, he's got Bailey behind him, Hargraves from WA has moved up, Deneen's starting to fall off, he might just be having a rest, but I tell you, Dua Yoa, Dua Yoa is going to come up with 800 metres to go, the time is around 11.51 at this stage, he's got 50 metres out. But I'd say Dua Yo is just going from strength to strength. Two laps to go. Try and get a, a lap time, 12.01. So the qualifier is 13.35. It's a big ask to do a 135. Mitch Brown looking comfortable in second. Matthew Bailey third. Hargraves from WA has come out of nowhere. Deneen followed by Aloisi. And they're still in touch. This is a great race. <laughs> so Dua Yo out in front. He's not slowing down, he's going faster. This guy's a machine. He's actually got around 12.31's the time as he crosses the line with about 600 metres to go, and he's doing this on his own. Mitch Brown is in that pack, Hargraves, and Bailey's decided he wants to move up and have a crack for the silver medal. But it's all do it, Yoa, coming into the home straight. When he crosses the line, he'll have a lap to go. Let's get behind this young man. He's run a sensational race. He's led for most of the race. Dua Yoa in front, he'll have one lap to go. He'll get the bell. We'll check the time for you. Around 13.07, 13.08 perhaps. Bailey said, I'm gonna have a crack. At Mitch Brown in third, Hargraves right on his hammer in fourth. Deneen fifth, Anthony Aloisi sixth. Then you've got Bert Whistle, Nelson, Whiteman. Patterson's crossed the line with one lap to go on getting the bell. Then you've got Harry Smithers. You've got Jack Davies. But it's all you would do it. It's all do it. You are out in front. He's got 200 metres to go. What a sensational race. He's been very strategic. He's led them out. He's let them catch up. 150 to go. This is all do a you are from Eureka up in the country re region. He had a sensational cross-country season and he worked hard. He's come up here today and he's got 105 metres to go and it looks like he will be the winner of this race. 90 metres to go. Give him a big round of applause. This is a great effort from Dua Yoa from Eureka. He's got 50 metres to go. You can see the pain on his face. 10 metres to go. He'll head towards about 14, 15. In second place, Matthew Bailey. In third place, Hargraves from Western Australia. Anthony Aloisi's coming fourth, followed by Bert Whistle, Deneen, Brown. Boy, there were some changes in the last 50 metres. This goes to show it's not all over till it's all over. Jordan Nelson crosses the line with Nicholas Whiteman. You've then got Zach Patterson, Jack Davies, Harry Smithers, followed by Paul Morgan from South Australia. Welcome and well done. Craig Ruddy from the United Kingdom, followed by Joe Hardy from Box Hill, Josh Harris from Frankston.